Hello everyone and welcome to the 13th episode of Pens and Feathers, an ongoing series where I take you through the steps of how I produce my drawings. In today's episode we are going to once again be focusing on Raspberry because she is just in such high demand right now. Before we begin, if you like my content and you want to see more, please check out all the social links below. Let's get into it. So this time we're going to be doing uh, another animation only uh, we're going to be doing the uh, traditional type animation just uh, frame by frame um, now to be quite honest sketchbook pro isn't the best software to use for uh, keyframe animation well hand drawn keyframe animation like this um, but it's the one I've got right now and uh, although it is limited uh, it still gets the job done but anyways what I started off with was um, I just did a really quick sketch of the position that I wanted Raspberry to be in. <clears throat> Excuse me. And basically, what I did was I kind of had to break her down into very simple um, shapes because at first I want to animate the shapes in order to get an idea of how she's moving or how I want her to move. So um, it's just a lot easier to work with lines and circles and move those first and then go back in kind of erase them and then draw over them again with more detailed uh, body structure. So you'll see right here, that's, that's kind of what I'm doing. So what you're gonna see throughout this video is, um, you're gonna see like the, uh, the picture kind of flashing a bit, or at least the, the drawing the prelimin pre preliminary drawing of raspberry flashing every once in a while and uh since i since i sped up the footage here you might not see it on the bottom but i'm kind of i'm flipping back and forth between frames um it just kind of helps me kind of see where uh where the body is moving to i've also got the feature turn turned on called onion skinning which is basically you get a faint um, image of either one frame before or one frame after which is just kind of kind of help guide you when you're drawing out your uh, Your shapes and everything but you see right here. I'm kind of scrubbing through the timeline and w What I wanted to do is uh, I, I'm looking for her. She's got her you know her legs up with her feet kind of pointed towards the viewer and uh, I want her to kind of turn her upper body a bit and kind of lean back a little bit and kind of pull her feet back towards her body and um, and I'm trying to visualize it by kind of making her, you see her chest right now? I'm, I'm visualizing her chest kind of like as a sphere and I have her chest kind of rotating a bit to the right. Her, uh, her left shoulder kind of comes up and touches her, you know, her left cheek. And, uh, and it's kind of like pulling away. And later on you'll see what it is what that she's pulling away from. But uh, right, this is basically, I'm just, just getting her movement, basic movements down. And as I'm going through each frame, I'm kind of generally at, over time adding uh, more and more detail to her. One of the things about uh, this, this just comes to specifically uh, rotation. Um, one of the things that kind of helps, at least I find, to, in order to make try and make a, a 2D drawing like this look like it's rotating in a 3D space, is you kind of have to pick points that, and you have to keep them stationary. Like, uh, like her, her, okay, like right now her uh, her forearm, her right forearm. You see where there's a point in her elbow where I try to keep that point stationary and then just bend the line up that represents her, her forearm. Same thing went with her chest too. I got a point on the top of the sphere and a point on the bottom. I tried to keep them from moving as, as little as possible because those are the two spots that I kind of wanted to rotate from. And right here now you see uh, I finally, I've, I've kind of gotten her movements down. So now I'm going back in and I'm using that first initial uh, rough drawing as a little bit of a guide. I'm going in and just putting in more and more detail and as time goes on I just I keep erasing the old stuff and keep putting on the new stuff and also with her feet too I'm gonna have her her toes crunch in so which I I'm sure all of you uh, will enjoy <laughs> I know I've had a, uh, a couple of people mention this, even my wife mentioned this, um, that Raspberry's eyes, uh, they, 
never quite drew them like this before. I drew them very, uh, very big, kind of very tall and narrow and very big. And the reason I did that is because, um, to be quite honest, they're just they're easier to animate. Uh, bigger eyes, at least for me, are just I just find them easier to animate. And uh, and I, I had some, uh, I saw some people on Twitter uh, posting too that they've actually never really seen Raspberry kind of with a facial expression like this, with a smiley facial expression. She's always more like, you know, pouty. And uh, yeah, uh, I guess first time for everything. So basically what I wanted to uh, do with Raspberry with her face was I wanted to have her head turning to the right and kind of going down a little bit and then her you know closing her eyes and scrunching them and then also like clenching her teeth like she's trying to hold in laughter so one of the things um as far as like with eyes and uh and I learned this just from studying uh my own face in the mirror is, is you kind of learn where like creases in the face happen when you kind of do different facial expressions you crunch your eyes and everything and what lines form and uh, if you're you know old as dirt like me you get a lot more lines form so <laughs> so I don't I don't want to put quite as many lines on raspberry's face but uh, uh, especially in the brow area kind of like under her eyebrows when you when you kind of like bring your eyebrows down you know as you're like you know scrunching your eyes you're squinting them you know you start to get certain lines forming so um yeah animating faces is a lot of fun I like I really enjoy it Come them toe crunches. You ready? So one of the things um, coming up here in a second, uh, like I said before, I wanted her feet to kind of be pulling away from the viewer. And uh, in order to kind of like, kind of pull off the effect a little bit, what you'll see is as her feet kind of go away towards her chest, I kind of shrink them a bit so they get a little bit smaller. Um, it's just an added effect to help. You know, again, when you're working with 2D lines and not an actual 3D animation you know, software, um, you got to improvise and just one of the one of the illusions you can use to make things look like they're getting further away from you is you just make them a bit smaller. So I guess I'll talk about one of the one of the, the things here as far as like uh, frames and how many frames per second. Um, when I do my uh, a typical like animation is usually like uh, typically like 24 frames a second, right? Um, when I do my little GIF animations like this, uh, I usually do like 12 frames per second. Um, now, typically what happens is in each image that I draw, it's duplicated once. Uh, but now if I want to make something look like it's moving faster and more smoother, then it's every frame. So one of the, the things I do here is especially when I want to make one of the characters look like they're like maybe vibrating or jiggling really fast, you know, shaking. Um, what I'll start doing is instead of doubling each frame, I'll do the jiggle like every frame. Um, so it just it makes it look faster. It's not held out for another frame. Same thing with like sweat and stuff. like. Um, later on in this animation when you see when I'm doing like the sweat and the vibration effects um, all of those I do uh, one frame a second um, and that just 
it gives it a much smoother effect. Also, it kind of makes it, it gives it a bit of variety to the animation so that every piece of the animation isn't running um, with each frame duplicated. You've got some that are duplicated and then some there aren't. It just helps uh, kind of spice up the animation a bit with some variety. And yes, I decided to uh, put her in her uh, her black pajamas that she usually wears a lot on her on the Twitter account, uh, just because they're it's quick to, to fill in, and uh, obviously I got to put something on her for YouTube, and um, it just it it, it, it kind of shortened the process a bit because without that um, there'd be a lot more since she is kind of bi color, you know, she's got the different colored limbs they would just take longer and this uh, I just wanted to uh, I needed to speed up the process a little bit and here I just I switched the background color so I knew um, that was you know making sure that the white parts of her were indeed colored in white and now it's just uh, I've got I've got her moving down so her outlines now it's just a matter now going in and uh, and coloring her So after I was done coloring her, I went back and I added in some blush to her, you know, her face and her feet. And uh, now it's time to uh, start drawing out uh, what it is I wanted going after her feet. And you'll see here, I kind of start putting in some, uh, you know, some rough draw, some rough drawings of. Uh, it's gonna be just your typical, like you know, two mechanical hands. Um, so here I am. I'm just putting in the roughs, and then I'm just gonna get the very basic movements down. I kind of wanted them kind of be like rubbery you know very very kind of like elastic looking little looney tunes looking you know um and very quick so you'll see when i draw the uh the final lines i kind of had a lot of distortion and just to make them look like they're uh, they're moving quickly so you'll see So I had them uh, replay over and over again just so I could look at them and visualize if the movement seems correct to me. Um, and that's, that's, that's a situation right there where I was talking about earlier where I went one frame, uh, every frame it was a, a new drawing because I did want them moving uh, uh, you know, more quickly than uh, Raspberry herself was moving. 
Um, and one of the things I, uh, I know too is like, it's a lot easier when you're doing hand-drawn animation, at least for me, it's a lot easier to draw things that are moving uh, very extremely or very fast than it is for things that are moving a little bit more just subtly, like like when Raspberry, when she was just you know kind of turning her body. To me, that was a lot more difficult to draw than if you were having, like, okay, I'm just gonna say, <laughs> um, there's an animation I did for Raspberry, which is only available on the Patreon um, because it's a lewd. Um, it was Raspberry, she was stuck in the jelly bean, and it was, let's just say it was going to town on her, right? But it was a very extreme movement, and it actually was very easy to draw. Um, whereas, like, I don't know, compared to just her just kind of sitting there turning a little bit. Um, I don't know, it's kind of kind of funny how things work out like there. And here we go. See, see what I was talking about? I made the hands a lot more distorted, just because I wanted to portray there was a lot of speed going on with the fingers as they were, like, you know, tickling her feet. So I'd gone in and added in the, the sweat flying off of her and some vibration lines. And then I wanted to add a couple of these, I'm not even sure what you'd call these. I see them sometimes in anime, usually like comedies and stuff where if one of the characters is really like cracking up. You know, they have these kind of like, I guess they're like scream scream arrows or just, just these little effects that kind of like kind of jut out from their face to make it look like that they're, you know, being loud and obnoxious. Um, so that's what I kind of wanted to add here with the raspberry that she's kind of trying desperately not to, you know, blurt out. And then also I added some uh, some little TKL letters uh, around her feet too as they're, you know, tickling her feet just to, I don't know, I just like putting those silly little sound effects. finished piece um, I did have to I did have to slow it down because the, the premiere project I'm working at right now is 60 frames per second and obviously the animation itself runs at 12 so I had to slow it down a bit it's probably missing a frame or two um, but I'm gonna post the full thing as a gif on uh, social media and stuff so you'll be able to get it I hope you've enjoyed this latest episode of pens and feathers uh, I'd just like to take a moment and thank my 245 patrons, especially Chad Frazmer, Playful Insanity, Emily, Wolf Lenhard, Mularu, Michael, Neofox, Papaya, Willow TK, Kerosene Wildfire, Lord Jabba Jabba, Andrew Martinez, and Raj Forte. Thank you very much. Thanks again for showing up, everyone. Don't forget to check out all my uh, social links below and keep tabs on Raspberry's Twitter because it gets pretty crazy. I'm out of here. Later.